Right then, welcome to the channel. Uh, as you can see, I have purchased myself not one, not two, but three milling machines. Uh, yes, they were bloody heavy too. So thank God I've got my little trolley to move them around. So I picked up these milling machines from a, an equipment dealer. So they tend to deal with huge pieces of equipment, however they come across these. And they come from a technical college. This particular model is an Optimum BF20. This being my first mill, probably not the best way to go about it because I have no idea how a good one functions uh, as to how a bad one functions. Luckily I've got three, so by the time I've played around with them and got an understanding of how they work and what have you, I should have a good idea as to how they function properly. Now the equipment dealer were very open. They let me look around the machines before I actually made the purchase and inform me of the faults that were on the machines. The first one has a gear issue. The second machine comes with an electrical mm. issue. And then lastly, one of the machines does actually work. However, the readout or the display is faulty. What I'm gonna do is name the machines, so it makes it a little bit easier to understand what's up with each machine and also help you follow along at home. So I proceeded with the electrical fault on Tom. Now the machine never powered up. Uh, you plug it in and there was no lights, there was nothing, uh, the motor wouldn't spin. Weird. Someone's been in the back of this. To begin with, I presumed that it could have been uh, a faulty safety switch as some of the switches were hanging out and they didn't look too good. Uh, looking at the front, I couldn't see anything uh, visible and then obviously looking at the back as well on the board, there were no signs of any kind of issues with the board whatsoever. Ah, it's a fuse. So we've got 230 volts, or 240 volts. What we've got here is, uh, I guess it's a transformer. Because uh, on the board it states AC 230 volts going in. On the output side you've got AC 9 volts. And then if we have a look on it, 230 volts AC input, output 9 volts AC. So. I've got my meter set to AC and I should see 230, 234 volts. Now on the other side I'd expect to see 9 volts. So I knock the meter down a little bit. So it's fluctuating all over the place. 1 volt. So to double check, I've pulled out the board on the working one. Same scenario. So again, same test. Input side should see 230. Might help if you turn it on as well. Right setting 236 volts, 9 volts is that side. Break it down 10.6. Uh, my feeling is the transformer on the other machine might be faulty. So I'm going to do a bit more investigation. So at this point, what I decided to do was desolder the transformers from both of the mills and then swap them over. So I took the good transformer and put it in place of where the faulty one was. And this was the result.
success. So it worked. So that tells me that there was an issue with the transformer. Now, what I decided to do was investigate a little further into what was actually wrong with the transformer. So I began to disassemble, and what I found was that there was a fuse, an inline thermal fuse on the primary circuit, which had failed. Now, looking closely at this thermal fuse, it stated it was rated to 130 degrees. So that leads me to believe at some point this machine was overused or overworked and that thermal fuse failed. So now that I confirmed that the transformer was at fault, I needed to source a new one. I looked around online and found one on AliExpress and it was roughly around uh, 11 to 12 pounds. It took roughly two and a half to three weeks to arrive. Once I'd installed it on the machine, I then proceeded to test and as you can see, the machine is functioning as it should. So with Tom now being fixed and working as it should, I moved on to the next machine, which was Harry. Now Harry had an issue with the gearing, so the high and low gear selection. So whenever you turn the machine on, if you selected high or low gear, you would just hear a grinding noise or a grunching noise from the milling head. So I proceeded by disassembling the mill, beginning with the motor. And with the motor removed, I inspected the meshing gears on top of the mill head. Now these all appeared intact. Sometimes you hear stories of plastic gears cracking, but in this case, they were okay. So I proceeded a bit further and disassembled the mill head completely. And this is what I found. The high and low gear had been completely stripped of its teeth. Luckily, this is a plastic gear and no other gears were damaged within the milling head. So what I needed to do now was source an alternative gear. Now this particular mill is shared between various brands, so there are plenty of parts that can be found online. However, I found AliExpress had the parts readily available in stock, which is where I sourced my gear from. So that leaves me with my very last mill. Now I'm undecided as to what I'm going to do with this mill. Originally I was going to keep it myself, however I could possibly sell it on and carry on doing refurbishments of machines as I've enjoyed this. However, this particular mill was working, so from the outset it was working, it was functioning, however there was just an issue with the display, which turned out to be condensation on the lens. It's also become a bit of a mule for parts, so the other machines, just to get them up and running and to kind of clean them up, refurbish them, uh, it essentially had parts taken from it. So this could turn into quite an interesting project. There are a handful of items on the mill that I will need to custom fabricate. One of the areas I'd like to address is possibly a belt conversion. So these machines tend to be on the noisy side due to the fact they have mesh gears, so a belt conversion would quiet that down. 